Is China going to challenge Neuralink's leadership in the field of brain-computer interface? Will your future brain chip be Chinese? Today we talk about the Neuralink competitors coming from the Far East. The US-China technological race goes beyond the military and space exploration. China is also looking at becoming a leader in the fields of human and artificial intelligence, with a growing interest towards brain research. In fact, according to a Chinese paper, Chinese patents already account as of today for almost 40% of the global patents in the field of brain-computer interfaces, even surpassing the US. We have to understand that research on brain-computer interfaces in China is not something new. It started in the 1990s at Tsinghua University, one of the leading universities in China. And from this university came one of the first companies that actually indirectly challenged Neuralink, Neuromatrix. Neuromatrix is a company that was founded in 2019 and is working on brain-computer interfaces to treat patients with neurodegenerative diseases. But just like Neuralink, it has also the long-term objective of enhancing human capabilities and merging the human with the machine. In fact, the Chinese company compared itself with Neuralink a few times. In a 2020 presentation, the founder Tsang Milin said Neuromatrix is the only Chinese company able to compete with Neuralink. According to the company, their technical solution can pick up brain signals with better clarity than the Neuralink chip. It is also wireless and allows for two-way communication, that is, it allows both reading and stimulating the brain. In addition, it reduces power consumption by an order of magnitude, which means a smaller battery for this kind of device. And it does not use Bluetooth as a communication protocol. Sounds great, but when is it going to be available? Keep in mind the Neuromatrix is still in its startup phase. In the 2020 presentation, they promise human trials by 2025, but they seem to have increased the pace. Because in a recent article, they announced mass production shipment by later this year. However, I have to be honest, because the information provided by this company is pretty scarce. I mean, just take a look at the Neuromatrix website. This is the website and it has very little, very, very little information. Yeah, it just talks about the company, the about us section, and it talks about the values, yes, to develop these technologies that can help many people and blah, blah, blah. And it talks about their business profile, but it doesn't say a lot. And then it has a section dedicated to the careers, but that's it, you know. If you click on these links, it just, it just says one page. And for a company that is challenging Neuralink in the field of brain-computer interfaces, this is quite disappointing. So could it be the Neuromatrix is actually pretty advanced and will soon surpass Neuralink? Or is it just the Neuromatrix is riding along Elon Musk's hype? While we wait for more information, let's take a look at other challengers. Because Chinese competitors are not only challenging Neuralink when it comes to the actual device, the actual implantable device, the brain-computer interface itself, but also in terms of the implantation technique. Do you remember the famous Neuralink robot? I have made a video about that. The Neuralink surgical robot is an essential part of Neuralink's approach, because this robot can in fact implant rapidly, but safely, large numbers of electrodes. At the Shanghai Institute of Microsystems, scientists are working on something similar. The scientists presented at the 2021 World Artificial Intelligence Conference in Shanghai a brain-computer interface realized with flexible electrodes that are implanted via automatic surgical implantation. And apparently, all of this without craniotomy. craniotomy be that is the procedure where the bone is removed to access the brain, the cranium is removed to access the brain. So the robot can just scan the brain and look for target spots. And it can reach these target spots with an accuracy up to 10 micron, where micron is a millionth of a meter, which is the same order of accuracy as for the Neuralink implantation. And the performance, according to the scientists, is reported as being equal or even superior to the Neuralink performance. This brain-computer interface has been tested so far on mice, rabbits and monkeys. We've reported successful data acquisition even after 8 months, that means even after 8 months from the surgical implantation, the data acquisition from the brain was successful. And like for Neuromatrix, the application of this kind of device are similar, that is, to treat neurodegenerative diseases, but also to merge a human with a machine. Yeah, you might wonder, you might ask, 
they claim a lot, these companies, but what about the practical results? You know, what about the substance? Well, China showed some more practical applications where we can take a look at. Like this study from Zhejiang University from early 2020, where we can see a successful brain-computer interface implanted in a paraplegic patient that allowed this patient to control a robotic arm. And it was the first clinical study of this kind in China. Now, it's interesting to notice that Zhejiang University became also famous in 2019 with a different and somewhat controversial study, where scientists managed to control a rat with a brain-to-brain -brain interface. So, not brain-to-computer, but brain-to-brain. -brain. That is, the commands were thought by a human, and the human had a brain-computer interface, so the thoughts of a human were transduced into commands and then transmitted to an implant implanted in the rat's brain. So, the human could basically control the rats via stimulation, could think about the commands and control the movements of a rat. Pretty crazy, right? But don't worry, because Chinese companies are also in fact working on other kinds of brain-computer interfaces, less invasive or non-invasive at all, that are also less creepy. An interesting example which comes from the same university where Neuromatrix came from is Neuracol. Neuracol is a company that was founded in 2011, and it works on minimally invasive and non-invasive brain-computer interfaces for rehabilitation and also for brain research. And this kind of brain-computer interfaces allow both reading and stimulation stimulating the brain. The technologies and the products rely on techniques that are, as I said, minimally invasive or non-invasive, so they don't require surgery. We're talking about techniques like EEG, electroencephalography, FNIRS, functional near infrared spectroscopy, which is the same kind of technique that is adopted by kernel in its devices, TDCS, transcranial direct current stimulation, and many others. And the focus of Neuralink, it's the focus of this company is particularly on the signal acquisition and in particular on the protection of the signal from from external interference. A similar application is Brain Talker. Brain Talker was released in 2019 from Tianjin University and it consists of a chip that allows several brain computer interface applications, like allowing the user to type with their mind. That is, the user can just think about some commands and these commands are transduced into actual characters typed on a screen. And it achieved a pretty impressive performance, up to 69 Chinese characters per minute. But in addition to this kind of application, like for brain research, there are more, let's say, <laughs> ambitious applications and uses, like the use on astronauts, Chinese astronauts, to help them manage cognitive loads. Overall, between invasive and non-invasive solutions, we can say that the interest for brain-computer interfaces is growing in China. In fact, in 2016, it was approved by the country a 15-year plan called the China Brain Project that targets neuroscience with the purpose of not only studying the brain, but also enhancing it. In 2021, the China Artificial Intelligence Industry Development Alliance published a paper which provides a very good overview of not only the state of the art, but also the future direction of this field in China. Medical applications are an obvious example. Now, the first kind of application that you can think about when you think about brain-computer interfaces is to help people with disabilities or to help people with neurodegenerative diseases. But the paper highlights how there are also other potential applications, some a bit concerning, to say the least. The education industry is an example. Because there is a growing interest in China in personalized education approaches that include brain-computer interfaces, or they include collecting data about the students. Uh, but some could say they could be new ways to monitor the students. But an even more questionable example of application is the military. The paper mentions also applications like brain-controlled exoskeletons and even brain-controlled weapons. The paper doesn't go into the detail about this kind of brain control devices, but it highlights how from China we can expect to see some pretty interesting progress in the next years, and maybe some actual challenges for Neuralink. So stay tuned for more news, and if you're interested about these videos about Neuralink competitors, I invite you to subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.